Hello students, welcome to finite element method course. Today we will discuss steepness matrix formulation of rectangular plate bending element with 12 degrees of freedom. This element is also called as ACM plate bending element. ACM stands for Adini, Klopp and Melosh. This element is also called as C1 continuity element. So the statement is derive element stiffness matrix for rectangular plate bending element with 3 degrees of freedom per node. So 3 degrees of freedom per node and since it is a rectangular plate bending element having 4 nodes total degrees of freedom becomes 12, 4 into 3, right. So this is the element considered for the mathematical formulation of stiffness matrix. Origin is taken as node number 1 where Cartesian coordinates are 0, 0. Size of this rectangular element is A by B. Length is A, width is B. So, coordinate of node number 2 are A0. Coordinates of node number 3 are AB and coordinates of node number 4 are 0, B. So, very first step is since degrees of freedom at each node are 3, and those three are since it is a bending element which is subjected to transverse load Q on the top surface of element. The element will undergo deform bending deformation like this which has vertical deflection at any point and the rotations, two rotations. One is in along x direction about x axis and second is about y axis. So at each node of the element there are three degrees of freedom one is w then rotation about x axis and rotation about y axis so since there are three degrees of freedom per node total nodes are four so total dof becomes 12 that's why it is called as 12 dof plate bending element step number two of stiffness matrix is to write down the displacement function for the element since it is a bending element with the 12 degrees of freedom, we know that we have to write down the displacement function using Pascal triangle. We have to pick up the 12 terms from the Pascal triangle to formulate the polynomial of deflection that is W. Displacement function means we have to write down the polynomial function for the deflection W. So how to write down this polynomial? This is from the Pascal triangle. So if you look at the Pascal triangle, this is the Pascal triangle. Now we have to pick up the 12 terms from Pascal triangle because our total degrees of freedom are 12. So this is first term 1, then these two terms total 3, then these 3 total 6 and these 4 total 10. So 10 terms are picked up from first 4 rows of constant, linear, quadratic and cubic. Now total 12 we have to pick up, so 2 are remaining. So we have 5 elements, uh, terms of 5 option. So which two will pick up? We'll pick up the two that is x cube y and x y cube. What is reason behind taking these two terms? The reason is there are two important reasons. First is while picking up the elements in 2D elements, uh, picking up the terms in 2D elements, we have to maintain the symmetry of triangle. So if we pick up these two element, symmetry of triangle is maintained. We have two options to maintain the symmetry. We can pick up x raised to 4, y raised to 4 also. And we can pick up x cube y, x y cube. So which one is correct? So for that there is a second property of Pascal triangle. We have to pick up the elements which are nearer to axis of symmetry. This is axis of symmetry and these elements are nearer to axis of symmetry. Not x4, y4. That's why these two elements will select. This how to use the Pascal triangle to decide the displacement function that already I have prepared a video. You can refer that video to understand how to use the Pascal triangle. So finally our 12 terms from the Pascal triangle are these 12. Okay. These 12 we are going to use to formulate the polynomial of deflection. Now we are multiplying by generalized coordinates to each term alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha x to formulate the displacement function. So 1 this 1 into alpha 1 plus x into alpha 2 
plus alpha 3y plus alpha 4x square alpha 5xy alpha 6y square alpha 7x cube alpha 8x square y alpha 9xy square alpha 10y cube alpha 11x cube y and alpha 12xy cube like this we have to formulate the displacement function so this is displacement function based on the pascal triangle for plate bending element with 12 dy then step number 3 is displacement function in terms of nodal displacements nodal displacements are w theta x and theta y out of that w we have already written so remaining two nodal displacements are theta x and theta y so theta x we know that it is dw by dy and theta y is equal to dw by dx so differentiate w polynomial with respect to x and y to get these two expressions so when you differentiate with respect to y since it is a partial derivative when you are differentiating with respect to y x variable is treated as a constant right so derivative of alpha 1 is 0 because it is constant derivative of alpha 2 x is also 0 because alpha 2 is constant and x is also constant when you are differentiating with respect to y so first two terms are 0 then derivative of alpha 3 y with respect to y is alpha 3 then this is again 0 here alpha 5 x here it is 2 alpha 6 y again this is 0 this is alpha 8 x square this is 2 alpha 9 x y this is 3 alpha 10 y square this is alpha 11 x cube and this is 3 alpha 12 x y square so this is theta x expression like this you can differentiate the w with respect to y similarly if you differentiate w with respect to x you will get the expression of theta y so there are three degrees of freedom per node w theta x and theta y so if you write down those three expressions like this these are the three expressions of three degrees of freedom per node same three e equations if you write down in matrix form you will get like this right so w theta x and theta y it is a delta vector then coefficients of alpha 1 to alpha 12 which are called alpha 1 to alpha 12 are called as generalized coordinates and the coefficient of this alpha 1 to alpha 12 if you write down in matrix form this matrix of order 3 by 12 3 rows and 12 columns this is called as parametric matrix p is called as parametric matrix okay so parametric matrix p and alpha is equal to vector of generalized coordinates delta is equal to vector of nodal displacements okay this is step number three displacement function in terms of nodal displacements now next step is if you put the values of this w theta x and theta y these three expressions if you impose to each node in instead of this p matrix now if you put the coordinates of each node so now three expressions or three rows if you write down for four nodes w1 theta x1 theta y1 this is for node number 1 then this is for node number 2 then node number 3 and node number 4 coordinates of node number 1 are 0 0 coordinates of node number 2 are a0 coordinates of node number 3 are ab and coordinates of node number 4 are 0 b so if you put this coordinate that is x equal to 0 y equal to 0 for w so this is w right similarly w for node number 2 w for node number 3 and w for node number 4 similarly theta x1 and theta y1 if you put the values of these coordinates so if you put the coordinates of each node in these three expressions these three rows you will get the this 12 by 12 matrix okay this value these are called as nodal displacement now this matrix is represented by vector x and this 12 by 12 matrix is represented by matrix c and the alpha is generalized vector of generalized coordinates so this c is called as connectivity matrix c is called as connectivity matrix connectivity matrix so now you get a equation if you number the equation if you give this equation as equation number one and this is equation number two 
so if you calculate alpha from this equation number 2 alpha if you take c on this side it becomes c inverse into xc right and if you put this alpha in equation number 1 here so delta equal to p into p into c inverse into xc value of alpha if you put so this is delta so this p into c inverse this multiplication is called as matrix n n is called as shape functions p into c inverse matrix n is called as shape function so to find out the shape functions you have to find out the inverse of this 12 by 12 matrix okay n is equal to shape function so many times there is a question to find out shape functions of element so if you want to find out shape functions of this plate bending element you can find out p into c inverse where p is equal to this matrix and c inverse equal to inverse of this 12 by 12 matrix okay so this is step number four shape function now next step is we have to find out the strains so strain vector this is epsilon since these are the handwritten expression these are little blur to see this is strain vector so epsilon x is equal to d square w by dx square minus this is minus d square w by dy square and this is 2 d square w by dx dy epsilon x epsilon y gamma x y normal strains epsilon x epsilon y and gamma x y these are also called as curvatures bending curvatures minus d square w by dx square this term is called as curvature similarly minus d square w by dy square 2 d, uh, d square w by dx dy that's why this step is also called as strain curvature relation so epsilon is equal to minus d square w by dx square if you want to find out this we have to differentiate this expression this is this is dw by dx okay this is the expression if you differentiate this again d square w by dx square again with respect to x second order derivative so you will get derivative of alpha 2 is 0 derivative of this term is twice alpha 4 then derivative of this term is 0 derivative of this term is plus 6 alpha 7 x plus derivative of this term with respect to x is 2 alpha 8 y plus derivative of this term is 0 derivative of this term is 6 alpha 11 x y and derivative of this term is 0 so these four terms are written in the first row of this matrix here this one these are the four terms similarly d square w by dy square if you differentiate this expression with respect to y again okay and third is d square w by dx y dx dy multiply by 2 so if you differentiate either this expression with respect to y or this expression with respect to x you will get the same answer multiply by 2 you will get the third row of that strain matrix this one so when you write down these three these are the strain relations so this matrix is called as matrix b which is called as strain displacement matrix strain displacement matrix b equal to then stresses sigma is equal to d into epsilon this is elasticity relation where d stands for elasticity matrix which is based on the generalized Hooke's law this is elasticity matrix so elasticity matrix d is depend on the problem elasticity problem it may be plain stress problem plain strain problem axisymmetric problem whatever it is so sigma equal to d into epsilon if you put the value of epsilon here epsilon sigma is equal sigma means there are three stresses sigma x sigma y and tau x y there are three strains corresponding epsilon x epsilon y and gamma x y 
and d is equal to this is two dimensional hooks law this is e h cube upon 12 into 1 minus mu square this is e y h cube upon 12 so this is elastic constants as per the two dimensional hooks law you will find these elastic constants it may not be visible maybe because of the handwritten uh, scanning but you can find out these constants in, in any book of elasticity maybe theory of elasticity by Timotion Co. So this is sigma equal to d into epsilon if you put the value of epsilon here that is b into xc from previous step this is b into xc epsilon is equal to b into xc if you put that value here epsilon is equal to b into xc you will get sigma equal to d into b into xc final step of stiffness matrix derivation is you have a option where is you to use the variational principles to find out or to derive the stiffness matrix you can use principle of virtual work or you can use the principle of minimum potential energy to derive the stiffness matrix equation here i have shown use of principle of virtual work which stands internal work done is equal to external work done so external work done if you assume the force act force applied on the plate element is q force vector and the corresponding displacement vector is xc so force into displacement it is a work done external work done and internal work done is internal force into strain displacement that is stress into strain if you put the values of stress and strain from this this is stress sigma and this is strain epsilon if you put these two expressions here and if you integrate over the volume of the body you will get 0 to L that is integration may be one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional this is over the area since it is a plate bending element it must be integrated over the area 0 to A 0 to B 0 to A and 0 to B here it must be two dimensional this is B and this is 0 to A size of the plate so d into b into xc that is stress into b transpose into xc transpose that is strain transpose so this integration of d into b into b transpose this is called as steepness matrix then further you can solve this double integration by using mathematical approaches to find out the steepness matrix exact steepness matrix which is of order 12 by 12 so this is standard derivation of 12 degrees of freedom plate bending element which is also called as ACM plate bending element or C1 continuity element. I hope all of you understand. In the next class we will solve the stiffness matrix of 16 degrees of freedom plate bending element which is BFS plate bending element. Thank you. Thank you very much.